Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today we're going to talk about plants that look so good, they look fake. I have had so many times someone come into my home and point at one of my plants and say, is that one fake? As if I would waste my precious surface space in my home and scatter fake plants around my house for those less informed. And no, they are all absolutely real, they all just look too damn good that they make you question sometimes. Is that a real or a fake plant? So that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. And this is kind of inspired by this plant right here, which will be the first plant that we talk about today, which is Aglinema Spring Snow. As I was just talking about this in my recent video, House Plants That Are Impossible to Kill, because this thing is seriously impossible to kill, but I was also mentioning in that video that this thing really looks fake. And that's because it just looks so good, that it really just looks like a fake plant. So this is gonna be the first one we talk about today. There are so many Aglianemas or Chinese evergreens are their popular or their common name, but none of them really look as fake and artificial as this Aglianema spring snow right here. So not only does this plant look fake, but it behaves fake because as I said, it's seriously impossible to kill. Aglianemas prefer to stay on the drier side. Um, so I usually grow mine in a well-draining soil mixture and I'll water it roughly every like 10 to 14 days. And this one I did have in literally the darkest corner of my apartment, so I decided to just very recently move it right here so that I can hang out in the background of my videos for the foreseeable future. But yeah, it's just so beautiful. Um, really does have that completely artificial appearance, as most of these plants will in this video. But this is really the one that just inspired this video today. So I did want to quickly highlight it once more, although it probably is slightly redundant if you watch all my videos. But... Next up, I would really love to talk about this Hoya right here. So this is Hoya Wayetii, and this is probably like the fakest of all of the Hoyas I grow in my home. And I, I grow a lot of Hoyas in my home, but the thing about this is it just really just feels and looks like it's not a living plant which is something I really love about it. It's got a very interesting canoe-shaped leaf that just really doesn't necessarily fit in. It almost looks as if you would find this um, in the fake plant section at your craft store along the vining, twining, whatever uh, selection of uh, doodads and fake plant garlands that they have there. So I really just feel like this falls in the mix. And not only that, it just feels fake. So every time people are in my home touching my plants and they touch this one, it's like... Is this one real? But yes, it is real. It does grow. Um, I love this plant. I've had it for a couple of years um, and it's just a very slow growing. So once again, we'll kind of make you question if it's real or not, but no, it is a plant that just likes to take its time. It is a Hoya that I have found doesn't necessarily require as um, scorching sunlight as some of them do prefer. This one seems to um, take less light, which I think is kind of interesting as it is a very succulent Hoya but it's been doing just fine for me, pulled back roughly six feet from a southern facing window. So it's been doing quite well, but really does have that fake appearance. Of course, if this plant did bloom for me at some point, it would look a little bit less fake, but you can see, I would say, that this plant really does have a very slight artificial appearance to it. And the feeling, it really does feel, it really does feel fake. Like it doesn't feel anything remotely like most of the plants that I have in my home. And the next thing I want to talk about is this Calathea right here. So this is the Calathea macoyana. And this is a prayer plant. The umbrella term for Calatheas, Marantas, Stromanthes are all prayer plants. And I would say practically every single prayer plant would fall into this list today. But that would be a little boring if I just talked about prayer plants. So we're just going to talk about one today, and that's this Calathea macoyana, which I would say is probably the one in my home that really does look the most fake or artificial. It just has so much detail to the leaves. The undersides are nice and purple, which is really wonderful, but it just overall really just doesn't fit in with my collection because it really does have such artificial appearance to it, which I think is very lovely. This um, Calathea is not the easiest plant to care for. They're a little bit more higher maintenance than the fact that they prefer higher humidity. They don't like um, additives into their water, so it's best to not use tap water and to rather use distilled water for your plants as they just don't love things like chlorine and bromine um, in low tap water. And what's going to happen over time, as I admittedly water all my prayer plants with tap water, is they can't transpire out these additives. So they uh, get stored in the tips of the plant as these little brown crispy edges so that's something just to keep in mind and if you're not giving your uh, prayer plants enough humidity they'll usually get brown around the edges so one thing to make your prayer plants quickly not look fake is a couple of blemishes here and there as you can see on mine but it still is 
a very beautiful plant. So if you do have a picture perfect one of these in your home, I would not be shocked if everybody who comes into your home who really doesn't know very much about plants just assumes that this is a fake plant because there is just a little too much going on for this to be assumably a real plant. So I think you all get what I'm saying. Next, I would love to talk about this Ficus Taniki. I think this one really does stand out as one of the plants that's like the fakest looking things because this foliage is just like as if it was set to a camouflage pattern or something like that. It's just very out there and uh, it's really lovely how the new leaves come in with this bright red uh, hue to it. There's a, another variety of this plant called Ficus Elastica ruby which really holds on to that red color for like halfway down the plant in my experience but um this one is just the taniki which just has the plain white leaves and just gets the red leaves and the new growth as i have had in my home but the leaves really do look so fake they have a, such a wonderful camouflage pattern to them it's just so lovely and it's something where you almost can't imagine it necessarily growing in your home and like producing new leaves because it just looks so unreal so this is a plant for me that was just kind of like I, I was in disbelief when I first brought it home a couple of years ago that it was even going to do anything for me because I just kind of deemed it a little too beautiful for me to have. So I'm very grateful that this thing has been growing um, pretty well for me and I do find Ficus elastica taniki in particular to be a very reliable houseplant given you give it enough light. So my ficus taniki and my ficus rubies, I both grow inside windowsills. I find that's where they do the best, and if I pull them off in the past, I have had issues of them losing their lower leaves because I think they're just holding onto water for too long. So I just grow them in a windowsill. I water them not too often. I don't think I water either of mine more than once a week, and they seem to really flourish. Specifically, my ruby um, has been really uh, grown like crazy, but in particular, I think these ones that have the more white and green leaves, I think really have that much more artificial look compared to the ruby. So really wanted to point this one out today. It really does stand out in my home because of that that color um, whether it's the white or the red or just the crazy amounts of greens that are hiding on this on these leaves I think it's just such an incredible plant that really does look too good to be real it's too good to be true you know and uh, there are a bunch of snake plants that I grow in my home and they all are very funky they're very architectural plants they're not very foliage they don't really have leaves so they do kind of have like a very like fake look to them but this one in particular is Sansevieria trifasciata bantel sensation and this is the one for me that is just I, I wouldn't even like consider this a plant I would consider this an art piece in my home like it is just so funky it's got so much about it that's just like as if I, I, I purchased a piece of art rather than a plant if I if I put my face like really close to this plant or if I just like take pictures with my iPhone just like right up to the plant it just it doesn't even look like foliage it just completely looks Unreal, which is something I just adore by, about this plant. I can show you it's a real plant because we do have a little bit of brown blemishing right here, as you can see. Um, but it, it, once again, a very excellent plant for a bright windowsill. I grow this in a western facing window and I've been growing it there for two years at this point and it's been doing very well for me, producing a bunch of little babies, which is very exciting. It just really doesn't look real. It's just another one of those plants where it's like you bring it home and you really almost feel like it's just not going to survive because it just looks so artificial. So this is of course one I had to point out for today's topic, but yeah, really, really does not look like a real plant. Like it, it, it really, just nothing about this looks real. It doesn't even have leaves, you know what I mean? On top of just not having leaves and being completely architectural, it just has just such a striking uh, artificial appearance. I think it's just so incredible. I, I really don't love any Sansevieria the way I love my Sansevieria trifossi, the Bantel sensation, because it is just, mm, it is just something else. Next up, I would love to talk about air plants or Tillandsia. So this is just one in particular. This one right here is a Tillandsia eranthos. And Tillandsias are so underrated. They are one of the most underrated houseplants that I am currently aware of. I think people sleep on these things because they are just so out there and so alien that once again, you just kind of think you're going to kill it. And the one thing about air plants is, you know, I've brought them home and I've put them on just a shelf and just expected them to live. They don't, they don't do that. They, they need a good amount of light. So this is one of my favorite way to display air plants, which is just, I call this a mount, I guess, even though it's not really mounted on there, but it's just a piece of bark that I've quite literally <clears throat> just glued a stick to, put a piece of wire in and put this air plant in and I call it a day. This is just such a fun way to display your air plants. And of course I display air plants 
air plants in so many other ways in my home because that's the joy about air plants is they are just so wacky and so out there and the fact that they do not need a pot and they would die if you plant them in a pot because they would rot um, that they can go practically anywhere given they're getting enough light so i would recommend keeping your air plants if you can within like five or six feet from a, a decently bright window or inside a much darker window and you can also judge your air plants by the color so this is a a little bit more of a greener air plant compared to like my Tillandsia tectorum, let's say, which I'll show you guys a picture of now, which is much more white. That one can take a lot more light. So I grow that one in a southern facing window where this one I'm growing inside a western facing window, but it's kind of positioned somewhere where it's not getting hit by any direct sunlight, which is exactly what this air plant wants as it is typically growing on trees in the wild attached to trees. And they have that canopy from the tree leaves up, a, uh, up ahead. Uh, just kind of shielding that harsh sunlight. So that's exactly what this wants. I like to spray them over soaking them. I spray them until they're soaking wet, mind you, but I don't like to just dunk them inside water. So I spray them till they're soaking wet. Um, something like this, I might set upside down to dry other ones. If they're a little bit less um, thick, I might just like set them upright, but I really wanna get all of the water out of the crown of the plant because I find that that can incite rot. But air plants are so incredible. There are so many incredible ways to display them. And I really think it is a plant that everyone is sleeping on because there are just so many types of air plants. They all look so different and they all are so cool and they are really easy to care for given you really just give them enough light. I think that's the secret to practically any house plant. If you're struggling with it, give it more light. So we have one more I wanna talk about today, which is my staghorn fern or my platycerium bifurcatum. And this really just looks like leaf antlers. Like I, I call this the vegan antlers and it seems to be the best explanation for this when I'm trying to explain what it is to people. And it's just so funky. This thing is literally just growing on a piece of wood. It's a fern that I've tied to um, this wood and it's just living and growing these antler-like things. And this is how the plant grows. So as um, these plants get more mature, they tend to get more um, sections to their leaves and it really does have that look of like a moose or deer antlers up on your wall, which is specifically why I have this plant mounted to a piece of wood because that's exactly the effect I'm going for. And I think that's what most people are going for when they grow this plant in their home. If you've been struggling with them in the past, because I've struggled with them in the past, so I'm just speaking from experience, give them more light. As I was saying, if you struggle with a plant, try giving it more light. So this I grow maybe like four or five feet away from a southern facing window, which is pretty bright. And I water it when it dries out, which is probably every, like every three or four days, maybe pushing onto five sometimes if I'm feeling a little lazy. And the one thing I love about staghorn ferns is they are much more forgiving than regular ferns. If you've grown like a Boston fern or a maidenhair fern in your home and you've forgotten about that thing for just a couple days, and you came back to a completely dried up dead plant that doesn't happen with staghorn ferns. They have a little bit more structure to them that they can withstand a little bit more drought. So I find these, if you do go, say I go a week without watering this thing, which happens plenty of times, it'll just look a little wilty and I'll just go ahead and give it a nice good soak and it'll perk back up in a day's time. So a staghorn fern is a really excellent fern to try. Not only does it look completely fake in appearance and just really just out there, it's just a funky thing. It's so easy to grow given you give it enough light so i would like i said i think that's the secret for all of my plants i'm talking about today mm, except maybe the the calathea but um all of these if you've struggled with any of these in the past or if you're struggling with them right now increase the light and i think you'll have a little bit more luck but anyway that's gonna about do it for plants that look so good that they look fake and i would love to hear from you guys what you think about other plants that look fake because i know there are so many other ones like Calathea ornata and stuff that I don't even grow in my home that really do look even more fake than the ones I was talking about today. So I would love to hear your examples. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.